One common thing that I see often is people struggling with an inconsistent width and profile of their weld. This can lead to not only your work looking a little bit off, but it might be blocking some of the more important things we need your weld to do. This is a really common problem that I help my students with. Controlling their overall width and getting better consistency is absolutely something that can be fixed pretty easily. And there are a few simple tricks that are gonna help your welding do the job it's supposed to and look awesome as well. Let's take a quick look at the problem I'm talking about here. Here we see a butt weld, and this has lost its consistency of its overall width. What I mean by this is that the overall width varies between the start and finish of the pass. It does not stay consistent. There's a few things that can cause this. So let's take a look at one of the most important things that this is absolutely gonna give you trouble with. Take a look at this graphic here. One of the most important parts of a weld like this is making sure we punch thoroughly into the material and we wanna penetrate the joint as much as we need. When we have varying widths like this, we're gonna have areas that perhaps have indeed punched in far enough, but we will definitely also have areas which have not had adequate heat input but we will unfortunately not see adequate penetration into the joint this is obviously a big problem when we see a pass that has been blended out to a proper width we can confidently know that it has indeed penetrated into the joint whether with thin material or thicker material as well when we have a weld which has unfortunately become too narrow one of the main things that most commonly happens is your filler material is going to stand proud and it's going to collect in the center in this case we're going to see a lack of fusion between the filler metal and the base material at the edges here and this obviously is where we want to see adequate blending between the two materials so looking at this weld here we can see that most of the filler material is just standing tall and collecting in the center so what is one of the most common ways that this can happen well it all comes from one of the most important things my students and I work on together and this is we talk about it all the time on my show it is the start Take a look at this photo here again. We can see that right at the start of the pass, our filler material has not blended out and established a proper fusion between itself and the base material. This is absolutely one of the most common problems I see with this joint specifically. Now, when trying to get better starts, what's the saying we say on my channel all the time? Can you remember? That's right, fill and chill. Allowing a little bit of filler material at the start and waiting a little bit. This is going to allow that material to be worked into the joint thoroughly. We're going to give it the time to take the shape and profile it needs. So not only is it going to take the exact shape, profile and everything that we want, but it's also going to ensure that our heat input puts the filler material where we want it to and help direct it so that we get the penetration we need. Once all of this has been done at the start, once we begin moving, it's gonna be much easier to continue. So again, if things are too cold at the start or if we're moving away from the start of the weld too fast before things have had time to properly sink in and establish, our filler material is just gonna stand proud in the center and it's gonna have lack of fusion to the base material it needs to blend in with. And when this happens, we're gonna guarantee that we have a lack of penetration into the joint. Allowing for more time for these things to establish at the start is obviously gonna stop these problems from happening. We're gonna have the perfect shape and profile right at the beginning. And one of the most important things that happens when we take the time to do this is like I said, when we actually do start trying to move with our weld pass, by that point, we don't have anything else to do. All you have to do is babysit and maintain these variables as you move at this point. By the time you start moving with your weld profile, you shouldn't have any more work to do as far as establishing these details of shape and profile. All it will be at this point is to just keep an eye on your overall width and the amount of filler material you're putting into the joint. Let's watch this demonstration here. Here you can see I have developed and established a proper puddle. I'm adding filler, but I'm not actually moving anywhere yet. I'm allowing these things to fully blend in and establish. And then once they are ready, now that I'm actually ready to move, you can see how easily things are flowing. All I have left to do at this point, as I said, is just maintain my details. I'm paying attention to the overall edges as well as the amount of filler material I'm using. And we can see here, it looks pretty decent. If you've taken the time to establish all these details at the beginning of your weld, fill and chill, you should theoretically have very few slight adjustments you have to do once you begin moving. In my online program, we go through a series of exercises to build a student up to this point. 
By the time we move on to beginning to actually work on full and actual welding joints, having a good idea of how to start and properly establish a good weld at the beginning gives a student a great idea of once they begin moving, most of the work is already done. Having welds that are straight and consistent is actually relatively simple, providing we have put the work in ahead of time. This is what I help people with a lot, whether in my program online or training someone in person, we're gonna build a really good understanding of having proper starts and what we need to be looking out for once we begin moving. And when doing so, it makes a lot of this work much more manageable for somebody who's learning. Keep it simple. Anytime you're running into problems with consistency or controlling your variables as you move, take a step back and go work on some basics. Please let me know in the comments below what type of struggles you're having if you're just starting to learn how to TIG weld. I would love to help you out. Being able to get things under control really quickly at the start is absolutely vital to getting a good weld. And a lot of these little problems can actually come with things that you could do to set up your gear a little better. To be honest, you may have something set up in your torch that you're not even aware of. And taking care of this problem right at the beginning is gonna make things a lot easier for you. This episode right here goes over these details I'm talking about specifically. Check this one out next, save yourself a ton of time. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. For Pacific Arctic Welding, my name is Dusty Phil and Chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.